Generally investing in the development of its fuel handling and distribution infrastructure. Well done, well done, congratulations. This facility is a strategic response towards accelerating the implementation of our national policy on ethanol blending and the use of cleaner fuels. It further dovetails with sustainable development goal number seven towards providing affordable and clean energy. This new flagship infrastructure project, which was constructed at a cost of 7.3 million US dollars, consists of storage and handling tanks with a capacity of 6 million liters, as well as attendant ancillary facilities. As a result, our national storage and handling capacity of ethanol is yet to increase by over 100% from the 5.2 million liters to about 11.2 million liters. These are spread across the country at Masasa, Feruka, and the Ulawayo depots. In fact, I must mention that uh, the other day when I was uh, with uh, President Ramaphosa and the President Masisi of Botswana, they are eager that we facilitate the supply of fuel to Botswana through our infrastructure and extend it to Botswana. And on the same <laughs> vision, President Ramaphosa feels that um, if we extend this to Botswana, you would want another pipeline to branch from Gweru to supply northern South Africa. So all these things are in the pipeline. <laughs> Over and above driving our import substitution policy, preserving foreign currency, creating employment, empowerment and wealth generation opportunities across the biofuel value chain. Such a facility consolidates the prevailing fuel availability and stability of the liquid fuel subsector in our economy. This is in keeping with the positive economic growth and the fuel demand which now stands at over 3 million and 4 million liters of petrol and diesel per day, respectively. Our economy is growing. Those who impose sanctions on us do not expect us to grow under sanctions. We are growing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the synergies and partnerships by both local and international players that have culminated in the construction of these strategic national handling facilities are equally applauded. These have seen the employment of over 200 employees and the transfer of skills among other benefits. On its part, my government will continue to foster an enabling environment that ensures that the biofuel sector is able to sustainably supply feedstock for the blending of petrol with ethanol. And we are producing the ethanol ourselves. As the production of ethanol increases, the establishment of additional storage facilities in different parts of the country will also be considered. Meanwhile, I challenge players and stakeholders in the industry to continue upholding and implementing quality management systems that guarantee quality products to consumers.
and customers. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is commendable that the National Oil Infrastructure Company of Zimbabwe has also completed the Mavuku Road Loading Gantry. The complementary infrastructure developments are key in the realization of our national quest to be an effective and efficient land-linked regional hub for fuel distribution in Southern Africa. To this end, the Mabuku Depot has now been dedicated to the delivery of fuel to surrounding markets, resulting in increased efficiency. Consequently, players in the fuel transport sector servicing the regional countries have largely been loaded out at this key installation. This has enabled the National Oil Infrastructure Company of Zimbabwe to achieve a record volume throughput of fuel pumping on the pipeline of 1,93 billion liters in 2022. <laughs> Over and above this, and in line with our devolution and decentralization policy, the National Oil Infrastructure Company has acquired a depot in Bulawayo to facilitate the bulk dispensing of fuel to clients in the southern region. Our sister republics of Botswana and South Africa, and to some extent Zambia and the DRC, are anxious that we extend these facilities to their benefit. The Ulawayo Depot, which has a capacity of 1,88 million liters, ensures that oil companies can evacuate petroleum products for their southern region customers, as opposed to coming to Harare or going to Feruka. Again, I say to the company, well done, well done, congratulations. I also applaud the National Oil Infrastructure Company for completing the first phase of the project to construct holding facilities for 2,000 metric tons of liquefied petroleum gas. This has increased the company's storage capacity of liquefied petroleum gas to over 5,000 metric tons, thereby ensuring sufficient buffer stocks and averting stockouts. Riding on the long-standing mutual and beneficial relationship between Zimbabwe and Mozambique, the National Oil Infrastructure Company and the company the Pipeline Mozambique Zimbabwe Limited are synchronizing the capacity upgrade of the Feruka pipeline for seamless operations and improved efficiencies between the two countries. The ongoing pipeline upgrade will culminate in an increased capacity of 3 billion liters up from the current 2,19 billion liters of liquid fuel per annum. This will be further ramped up to 5 billion liters per annum by 2025. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the National Oil Infrastructure Company Corporate Social Responsibility Programs which are underpinned by our development philosophy. Nika! Iko Tongba! Iko Namatikba! These programs include the refurbishment of 
four classroom blocks and donation of books at Mutsangwa Secondary School, as well as the construction of two F-14 houses for teachers' accommodation at Nima Primary School in Shimanimani District. The construction of two classroom blocks and the refurbishment of staff accommodation at St. Anna Mary Primary School in Marundira Rural District, among others, are said to positively impact on the quality of education dispensed to benefiting communities in our country. I'm equally pleased that the company is also running a scholarship program. Under this initiative, undergraduate scholarships are being offered to disadvantaged students at all state universities in this country. Again, I say to the company, congratulations. In conclusion, I wish to express my gratitude to the work that has been done by the National Oil Infrastructure Company of Zimbabwe, the board, the management, and the staff who continue to complement government efforts through constructing and upgrading our strategic infrastructure to serve the nation. Nika Innova Kwa Neve Nevai. As we celebrate this historic moment as the National Oil Infrastructure Company, I urge you to continue upholding innovative leadership. Continuous improvement and integrity is necessary. The culture of working with dedication as a united team that observes the best practices in your 